Broadcasting live and worldwide. Here's Brody Brazil. Wanted to bring something up here that I thought kind of went under the radar when it came out last week, and that is the A's putting out new renderings of their Howard Terminal ballpark. It looks a little bit different than what they initially proposed and rendered back in late November. Let's just take you through the timeline real fast. It was right around, in fact, I want to say after Thanksgiving, and the A's came out uh, late in a week and announced a press conference and said, here is what we're planning on. This is a direction they hadn't taken before. Of course, the Coliseum site was also under consideration. And in fact, that is part of their their future plans moving forward. But as for the new ballpark specifically, they had never really uh, come out with any type of design, um, illustrations, or, or any kind of material about what this ballpark would look like, the layout, um, you know, physically how it would look and lay uh, just north of, of Jack London Square. But the one thing that everybody noticed about the initial design is that it kind of had a, a squarish look and feel. In fact, I think they call it the the jewel box design. And I do have a whole nother uh, YouTube video you can check out on when that came out. There were some hidden things about the renderings that maybe you saw or didn't saw. So check that out on my YouTube channel. But the jewel box design, it greatly resembled Shy Park, which was the A's first home back when they were in Philadelphia. And again, you know, if you're not watching on YouTube, if you're listening here on the podcast, it's it's a square design, right? Like it's more of a square building and structure. But these newest renderings, which came out last week, they show something a little bit different. The inside of the ballpark hasn't gone through too many rendering changes, but the outside, the the shape of the structure externally, and even some of the associated buildings that they're also planning on putting up with the new ballpark, it has more of a rounded shape and look. And I wouldn't say circular, Um, But I would say an oval is definitely more of that shape. And also maybe even some of the finishings on the exterior do look a little bit different than what was initially planned. Um, First off, should we be surprised by any of this? These were renderings to begin with. How many times have you ever seen initial renderings look exactly like what the final product turned out to be? And that's a great thing because you want this constant evolution. You want this constant conversation. You want improvement in as many times and ways as you can get it for this this new stadium to look. And I feel like when the initial renderings came out, a lot of people said, all right, that's it. It's going to look just like this. Build it. Well, certainly things change over time. And especially when you're the A's, as they did, they announced this in 2018 and they're not having uh, they're not planning to have it finished until 2023. Right. So the more time you have built in there the more time and opportunity there is for change. But I got in touch with Dave Cavill. I do want to point this out because I was curious as to why the A's maybe changed their initial plans going from something square uh, to something with with rounded corners. And just want to make it, you know, what should be obvious, um, obvious to you is that um, the A's are not doing this on a whim. They didn't just all of a sudden say, yeah, you know what, let's try round. I feel like that's better. And we didn't consult anybody. We're just trying this out to see how it looks. Um, They went through a lot of consultations with neighbors in the area um, who feel that uh, this design, the rounded design, more of an oval, kind of integrates better into the neighborhood. Uh, Cavill also told me that uh, it should provide better views, which I think is something extremely important. You're talking about building, you know, right on the estuary and right next to downtown Oakland, and it's going to have views of the San Francisco Bay and I suppose potentially how high it goes up, um, the East Bay Hills and the cranes and the bridges maybe off in the distance. So you want to make sure that your your viewing angles are optimal. And the only people who really know what they're going to look like are architects and planners who have all the tools to kind of visualize from different perspectives how this is going to go. Uh, by the way, I really would like to check out the Howard Terminal site. Hopefully, as soon as the A's can, can lock it down, it will be open for walkthroughs and and maybe, you know, initial layouts. So you can kind of see, just get a, a physical feel. Nobody has really been around. People have been around the area, but nobody, I don't think, has literally walked right through Howard Terminal, like right on the land of where the ballpark would be because it is definitely under lock and key right now. And then the last thing that Cavill 
pointed out to me, which makes complete sense, is that the rooftop park that they're going to have uh, atop the ballpark, by the way, I know that might be confusing. Uh, there's supposed to be a living a roof, a living roof, which is actually a park as part of the ballpark on top of the third deck where the roof essentially is. It's a living roof. Um, and when you think about you know, people walking up the slopes to get to the highest points in the stadium, if it's square and more sharper angles, that's less conducive to maybe walking up the park to get to the higher elevations. The round corners kind of work better on the slope and angles. So that makes complete sense when you think about that. Again, those are the things that that Cavill uh, communicated to me, and I appreciate him uh, kind of filling me in with with more of the information. As for my takeaways here on the A's ballpark renderings, and again, I hope we make this a regular thing to see more and more of the ballpark. I hope the A's can keep uh, cranking these out uh, with their architects, Spiric Angles Group. I know they're probably really expensive just to make one rendering. You guys just see it as an image, but I bet you, you know, the cost is easily four and five figures per rendering. Uh, so I'm sure they're expensive, but they are beautiful. There are, are, there are, I'm sure, things you love and things you hate already about the renderings. I hope you don't hate too many things, but maybe you dislike them. My point is, don't get terribly attached to anything you see. Because again, concepts will change and evolve. And I could point out one thing already. Every time I look at the new stadium, I say, man, those are tiny scoreboards. Then I have to remind myself, Brody, this is 2019. By 2023, like, think of how much technology is going to be different and think how much bigger this scoreboard is going to be. It's going to be one giant video screen. I'm sure because 2019 right now, to us, imagine planning this stadium in 2015. Right, Things have gotten bigger and better and faster. Same thing will happen from 2019 to 2023. Technology options are definitely going to improve. So again, that's a personal you know, perspective of mine. There's not enough, there's not enough video screens or LED ribbons. Trust me, <laughs> there will be in time. And even if they're not depicted, if it's a good idea, the A's are all over it. Chris Giles... Dave Cavill and company, um, they are grinding right now to try and make sure they do this the right way. They understand this is a legacy project. How about this? Another takeaway, that rounded design. I know the square design was initially kind of a tribute to Scheib Park. How about that rounded design as potentially an ode to the Coliseum? Now, the Coliseum footprint is still said to Uh, or it's going to be planned to still exist, and that would be cool. But what if the A's kept at least a round external feel of their structure as kind of a statement to the Coliseum, whether it's a direct statement or not? The Coliseum, for uh, how many years it lasted, it'll always go down as the A's first home. And obviously in later years, uh, it it wasn't... uh, keeping up with other ballparks around the country. And you know what? They're doing great things to try and catch it up. This thing is not going out in its worst shape. In fact, the Coliseum's, to me, is getting better in its final couple of years here. It's going off into the sunset probably as good as it has ever been when you think about it, um, minus Mount Davis. Um, but again, maybe that rounded design is a bit of an ode to the Coliseum. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing to think about as a takeaway here. You know, 2019, when you look forward to some of the progress the A's might make on this ballpark, I don't know that you're going to see a whole lot of it uh, it come out in the news, right? It's not going to be at the forefront because there's a lot of things uh, going on behind the scenes. You might say the dirty work, acquiring the land, uh, getting passing grades on environmental studies, furthering some of the solutions to issues they have in in trying to build this stadium. Nothing is as simple as, hey, draw it up, plan it, build it, we're done. Everything, especially in the Bay Area, comes with its challenges. And so I I really feel like 2019 is going to be a year where behind the scenes, a lot of things, a lot of important things come together. You just may not see them on the forefront on a regular basis. But that brings me to thinking that 2020 and 2021 are going to be all about the fun stuff. 
I mean, once the land is acquired, once there's some green lights, once there's some thumbs up, and hopefully eventually once there's some shovels in the ground, I mean, things become very official. Things become a lot more finalized. And I know a lot of you out there in the comment section, I'm sure you'll even comment on this, whether it's uh, via the podcast or the YouTube video, you'll believe it when you see the shovels in the ground. Okay. I'll, I'll take you for your word. <laughs> That's fine. If you want to have that perspective, um, I'm not here to tell you any different, but I can't wait until, if you're saying you can't wait until that day, I can't wait until that day either. All right, so that does it for this YouTube video and this podcast. I really appreciate you watching and listening. And if you liked it, maybe consider subscribing both on my channel or as well, however you like to consume the podcast. I put it out on uh, iTunes as well as Spotify, as well as Google Play. And it's also on SoundCloud. So again, thanks for checking me out here. I'm also a heavy user on Twitter. Hmm, that sounds weird to say. Uh, and I'm really working hard on Instagram to put out some some great content on a regular basis. So check me out on the gram as well. Hey, until next time, I'm Rody Brazil. And yes, that is my real name. <laughs>